Hey guys, welcome back to Revit exercise 12-2. In this exercise, we're going to be covering how to draw out your kitchen. Your kitchen is going to be located here on your first floor plan. And last time we covered how to do a vanity. So let's go ahead and get started. First, you're going to go under the project browser, scroll down to the first floor plan. So this is where the kitchen is going to be located. We're going to start by cabinets, and then we're going to go up to countertops, and in the same procedure, put in our appliances. So the first thing I'm going to do is let's go ahead and start placing cabinets. You're going to go under the Architectural tab, Build Panel, Select Components. Under Components, you're going to go down here. And once you find your base cabinets, you will have a single door cabinet, and you'll have a double door cabinets. These specific cabinets are size. The larger the cabinets go, after 24 inches, you really want to have two doors. So let's go ahead and start from the corner. So the corner cabinet looks like this. It's a base 36-inch corner cabinet. I'm going to go ahead and place that here. You want to have that aligned to both sides, and you know from that 45-degree angle, this is the side that faces out. Now, you could place this cabinet again, or I can simply select here and select Modify first, and we're going to select Mirror, Mirror and Drawing and Axis. We're going to go ahead and select the object. So once you're under Draw and Axis, you're going to try to get the midpoint of this wall. At this point, it really doesn't matter if you're going to get the midpoint or not. I'm just simply going to be closer to this wall than that one. The idea is just to have a duplicate copy. And since we're drawing an axis, we can draw it closer to, to the edge of this wall rather than this wall. So now that we're here, we can use the AL command, align, or we can go under modify tab again and select align tool under the modify panel. Once we select that, you can cycle through tab and select the edge of this wall. And we're going to go ahead and select the edge of the cabinet. And that way we have the corner cabinet placed there. Next thing, we're going to have a 24-inch single door cabinet. So we're going to go back to the Architectural tab, Build Panel, and we're going to go under Components, and we're going to scroll down to a single door cabinet with 24 inches. So once you select the 24-inch base cabinet, single door, the cursor usually go to the back of the cabinet. So you want to really align that to the wall. It will snap to the wall as well. Now, later on, when we're looking at the elevations, we'll adjust these windows if they intersect into the countertops. But let's go ahead and continue building across. The next cabinet that we're going to put is going to be a 48-inch cabinet. Going on the Architectural tab, Build Panel, Components. So I'm going to go back in, go for a double door 48 inches. Now, me realistically building a kitchen, I would end up putting a 36-inch cabinet here for the sink, but 48 inches more than enough. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna place in our dishwasher. So again, architectural tab, and you guys get the regimen, build panel. The dishwasher we're selecting is gonna be 24 by 24 by 34. And the last thing we have left is our 15 inch cabinet. Now, right next to the dishwasher is a pet peeve of mine. You wanna really have a cabinet here or an end panel there because putting a dishwasher at the end feels like it's just floating in the middle of nowhere. You really want to have a cabinet that really mounts that thing there. So let's go ahead and go to components and we're going to go ahead and put a 15 inch cabinet there. Of course, that's going to be a single door cabinet. And again, that's where that goes. Now from each side of the stove, we want to have a counter space area. So we're going to go with a base cabinet that's 12 inch wide. So go to the architectural tab, build panel components, Single, cab, uh, sig single door cabinet again, 12 inches, and I'm going to use the space command to rotate my cabinet and then snap that here. We're already starting to see a, the kitchen come to life. We should have about 30 inches in the middle, two foot nine and a half is plenty for us to go ahead and put in our stove. We're going to go ahead and go back to our architectural tab, build panel, components, and this time we're going to pick a 12-inch cabinet for here. 
Again, using the space command to rotate our cabinets so they're placed properly. Then we're going to go back to our architectural tab, build panel, and we're going to place our refrigerator. Now, if you don't have the refrigerator, you can leave a 36 inch gap here. But we're going to go ahead and place in our refrigerator, go under our component, go down here, and you should have a refrigerator. We should be able to select any size of refrigerator. Any upright refrigerator would work. Um, we're going to go ahead with 35 by 32, right hand. That's what's specified in the book. Let's go with that one. And we're going to place it right there. Right next to the refrigerator, again, we want to ground the refrigerator as well. So we're going to go ahead and place a base cabinet there. The base cabinet we're going to place is going to be an 18-inch base cabinet. So we're going to go under the build panel, components, and we're going to go under single door 18 inches. Again, using the space bar, I rotated to where I get the base cabinet to be facing upright, to be facing in the right direction. And that is our basic layout of a kitchen. Now we're going to go under 3D to look at what that looks like. Notice how it's just the cabinets. We do not have a countertop on top. So next, we're going to go ahead and start putting in our countertops. Now your countertop comes in set of L's because they get interrupted by the appliances. So going back to the first floor plan, so I want to get an L-shaped countertop that will cover all the way through here to here. And then we're going to specify our sink cutout on that one. So let's go ahead and get started. So under the architectural tab, build panel, components, this is where everything will be located. So from here, we're going to go ahead and find our countertop. Notice how you have various different countertops. There's an L-shaped countertop with a sinkhole. Since we need a countertop with a 45 degree angle, we won't be able to find that in our list. We're going to go under the architectural tab, build panel, and select components. From here, we're going to select load family. Under casework, we're going to go back to English Imperial. Under casework, we should be able to find countertops. And over here, we should be able to be look for a countertop that has a 45 degree angle. Again, this can be manufactured and we can bring in both the countertop with the sink and we can bring in the countertop with. So let's go ahead and bring in the right countertops. Next, we're going to go ahead and load in our second countertop. So that's going to be located in the architectural tab, build panel. We're going to select components and go under load family. Once you load family, we're going to bring in countertop L shape 2 and we're going to go ahead and select open. So once we have both of those countertops in our file, we're going to go ahead and place the sink countertop here. So one of the things that you guys will struggle with is once you go under architectural tab, build panel component, and we select the countertop L with the sink hole, we're going to go ahead and select that. Once you have this countertop placed here, you're going to go ahead and reflect the countertop. Once you reflect the countertop to the left, you can control the countertop by using these keys. You're going to go ahead and align the countertop to over here. And once you have aligned the countertop, you're going to go ahead and use the AL command to align your countertop to the edge. So we're going to go ahead and use this to align the countertop. And once we have the countertop completely drawn, we can select the countertop and give it size. going to select apply and we have our sink. So simply select the countertop and use this flip instance. Again, we're going to go ahead and align these. So AL and I will just align it this way. Next, we're going to go ahead and place a countertop here. It's the same 45 degree without the sink. So we're going to go under the architectural tab, build panel, components, under components, I want to go ahead and select. I'm going to go ahead and use the space command to turn my countertop to the right orientation. Then select the wall and use the AL command, align again. And we're going to go ahead and align to the edge of the fridge and we're going to bring this countertop in. And same thing here, I'm going to use the edge of the actual cabinet to align, align that countertop. 
So once I have these two countertops in, again, we can look at our 3D. This is what it looks like. We're going to adjust the window height. But let's go back to the first floor plan. This is what the sink's looking like. Go back to the first floor plan. And then lastly, we're going to go ahead and put a countertop on top of this. Lastly, we have a straight counter. We're going to go ahead and go into the architectural tab, build panel. And under components, we're going to go ahead and go to load family. All we need is a straight counter, pretty much with no type of sink. So we're just going to go ahead and select this countertop. So, so far we have gotten countertop L-shape too, and we have gotten countertop L-shape with a sink hole. And now we're going to just get a simple countertop that is straight. I'm going to select open. And this countertop, we're going to use the space to get this backsplash to be facing this way. I'm going to go ahead and place it against this wall, and I'm going to use the align command. Now, one thing I do want to mention is these cabinets are about 34 and a half inches tall. And with a one and a half inch countertop, that gives you exactly 36 inches from the floor. That's what it's predestined for, or that's what it's pre-designed for. And that's what it is standard in construction. So now that we have the countertops in, we're going to go ahead and start placing our fixture. We're going to go under the architectural tab, build panel. We're going to select components. And we're going to go under here and see if we can find a stove. So once we find our range, our range can be 30 inches by 26 inches. I'm going to select this range, and we're going to place it here. Once we have our range placed there, we're going to go ahead and start placing our sink. We're going to go back to the architectural tab, components, and instead of range, we're going to go ahead and pick sink. The sink that you're going to pick is going to be sink kitchen, double 42 inches by 21 inches. Now, you are able to find a 36-inch sink into a 36-inch cabinet, but we're going to go ahead and go with what the book has said. I'm going to center it to the cabinet, and this is all I want you to do, and just select it there. So now that we have our sink placed in there in our 3D model, that's what we should be looking at, a kitchen sink that's placed on top of a kitchen base cabinet, dishwasher, and all your cabinets just like that. So next, we're going to go and start our upper cabinets. Our upper cabinets are going to go along this wall. Notice that we have windows that we have yet to adjust. We're going to adjust them soon. And the rest of the, uh, the rest of the cabinets are going to go all the way around. So let's go ahead and do that. Go back to the first floor plan. And we're going to start with a 45 degree cabinet first. So let's go under our architectural tab, build panel, components. So once we select components, we're going to go under here, and we're going to go for our upper cabinets. So all your upper cabinets are located here. You want to start from your upper cabinet corner unit first, because that unit is probably going to be where you start your, all your cabinets from. And as you get closer and closer to the wall, it will start snapping to the wall that you're actually in question. So we're going to go ahead and snap it to this wall because we get the 45 degree angle to be in the right place, and we're just going to simply select off is snapping to the wall. So you're going to AL, and you're going to use that line. Just wanted to verify with you, if you're reading this, that is the drywall, and this is your backsplash. This is the backsplash that came in with your countertop. So that line is not what you're attaching to. You're attaching the further back line here. So once you have that, we're going to build a 24-inch cabinet this way. So architectural tab, build panel, go under components, and we're still selecting upper cabinets. So upper cabinet, 24 inches, we can go with a double door. Again, as I hover close to this wall, it's going to gravitate towards here. Simply select this, and it's snapping to the right point. You're not snapping to this line up here. You're snapping to the wall. AL to align. We're going to align this closest to that side, and that's the 24-inch cabinet. We're going to do the same cabinet on this side. So we're going to go back to the architectural tab, build panel, components, and you're going to go ahead and select that same upper cabinet. As you hover close to the wall, it will snap. We're going to go ahead and snap there. AL to align the, wall, uh, align the cabinets. So select there, select there, and you have your upper cabinets here. We're going to put a 30-inch cabinet above here right after we place in our other cabinets. So architectural tab, build panel, components. We can go with our 30-inch cabinet. 
but we're going to have to modify this. I want you to go ahead and switch this down to 15 inches in height. So our height for this cabinet is going to shrink because this is directly above the stove. There's various ways to do that. So our height here, we're going to go ahead and make that 15 inches right off the bat because I believe we are not going to be using this cabinet again. So we're going to go ahead and make this a 15 inch cabinet. Press OK. I'm going to go ahead and place this cabinet against this wall here. Again, this will have to be aligned to the stove, so AL to align, and we select here. So after placing the 30 inch cabinet here, we're going to go ahead and place another cabinet here for 27 inches. Again, we just smashed this cabinet to the stove. So architectural tab, build panel, components, and you're going to go in with a 27 inch cabinet, upper cabinet, select the wall, and you're aligning to the edge of the countertop. So once you have aligned this cabinet, we're going to go with another corner unit. We're going to go under architectural tab, build panel, components, upper cabinet in the corner, select here. AL to align. Next, we're going to go ahead and place a cabinet here for 24 inches. So architectural tab, build panel, component. I'm going to go ahead and put a 24 inch upper cabinet here. Again, I'm using the AL command to align. And then lastly, we're going to have a 17 inch cabinet here. So we're going to go under the architectural tab, build panel, components. Once we have all the cabinets placed where they need to be, we're going to go ahead and start cutting into your elevations here. Now, one thing I do want to point out is if you are looking at this model on this view, you're looking at all these cabinets being sliced through here. As you can see, this cabinet is hovering on top of the actual stove. So this stove needs to have a clearance on top. So let's go ahead and change the upper cabinet on top of the stove. We're going to go back to the first floor plan and we're going to place an interior elevation here. So we're going to go under view, select elevation, and in our interior elevation I'm just going to face this way. And I'm going to go ahead and move the elevation back so when I have this section being cut I'm cutting through the refrigerator and I'm going to go ahead and look this way. So as I'm looking at this elevation, I'm going to go ahead and adjust this by aligning this up and as well as making sure all of the other cabinets are working in the elevation. Now one of the things that's going on in my particular file is that I have clearance spaces around my stove and therefore there will be filler spaces in this casework. Unlike the book, the book has this pretty much closer together. Despite the fact that I can put a 27 inch cabinet here, it's just pushing this way off. So I'd rather have these aligned and I'm just gonna leave it as such because when we actually have this built, you'll end up having filler pieces in the middle. So from here, I can put a vent hood up here and I've aligned this to the top. I can bring this closer down. I can make this cabinet about 18 inches and I can simply select this cabinet, select edit type. And instead of its height being one foot three, we can make it one foot six or we can even make it two feet. The idea is you wanna have it clear across the top, we're going to go ahead and use align. Notice how I'm able to quickly align and move things where they need to go. So in this case, I'm actually having this move around. This is a two foot six and this is a two feet and I'm going to put my vent hood right on top. I could simply select this and click select edit type. And again, I could change the height to 18 inches. This is, this is the ability of Revit that you can actually specify these things and align them accordingly.
again, it's everyone's personal preference. So I'm just going to go ahead and go ahead and put in event hood. You're going to go under the architectural tab, build panel, components, and under load family, you will load a file that I have placed in the description. Once you brought in your range hood, you're simply going to select range hood 30 inches. That's what we're using. And before you place it in, it, has, it can only be placed into the first floor plan. So before you place it in, you're going to go ahead and make sure you make the elevation from level negative 2. That way you can actually see where the range hood is going. And provided you're going to place it against the wall after flipping it. And once you have it placed against the wall, it should be able to be seen in your interior elevation here. So once you have your range hood file in, you're going to tape, type in AL to align the file to the, uh, to the bottom of the cabinet. Now my cabinet is specified at 18 inches. You can actually make this all the way up to 24 inches and bring this even closer to have more space up here. Now it could shrink down to 15 inches as the book has specified. And if you wanted to shrink it down to what the book has it, you will simply take the actual cabinet, edit type, and you will come in here and specify the height as 15 inches. Now, one of the things that the book teaches you is to do math, as in 2 foot 6 plus 4 foot 6 equals 7 feet to the top and all of that. I would simply argue to use the AL or the Align tool to align all your cabinets to the heights that you want it to go to. So with that said, we're going to go ahead and dimension and do callouts for this particular elevation. All right, so as we finish up annotating this particular interior elevation, as you can see, it was very, very quick for us to grasp how this view was created. And next, we're going to go back to the first floor plan, and we're going to go ahead and add this view. We're simply going to select the circle and hit check mark. So we have an interior elevation of that view as well. We're going to select here. And as you can see, we have these windows that are going up, but they're actually not they pretty much are getting cut right through with this cabinet. So rather than change all of the heights of our, of our windows because we have a set header height, we're going to simply select these windows. I'm going from 38 inches by 46 inches. We're going to simply switch them down to 38 by 38 inches. So one way to do that is select this window, and we're going to type in edit type. We're going to duplicate the window, and we're going to call it 38 inches by 38 inches. Press OK. And once you have that, we're simply going to set the height to be exactly the same thing as our width. We're going to select OK, and the window shrinks. Now, we want the header height to be the same as here. So as you can see, we can simply align AL to our previous height. And I can take that window and actually make it this window as well. So I'm going to simply select that window. And now I'm going to go back to making it 38 by 38 inches. Align tool is your friend. And once we have both of those windows right where we need them, that completes that elevation. We can simply go ahead and annotate this as well. Um, and that's about it. With that said, we have one more elevation left. Let's go back to the first floor plan, and we can select here, and we can add in an, in an interior elevation that goes this way. We can look at this. If you want to, you can add in a cabinet above here. Again, our refrigerator is facing the wrong way. We're going to go back to our first floor plan. And this is uh, one of the key reasons why we have interior elevations. We can actually take a look at things like this. So go back to your first floor plan. And you're going to simply select the refrigerator. You're going to type in RO. Face it the right way. Notice how there's a line here. We're going to go ahead and align this line, AL, from here. Let's move this up. 
I guess that's the clearance line. And we can simply go back into our interior elevation. And we have the refrigerator facing the right side. Now, we could have a cabinet that goes above here. I can DI and see what is the dimension here. So we have one foot two by 36 inch gap for our upper cabinet. I can simply select an upper cabinet, go to architectural tab, build panel, components, and I can simply select an upper cabinet here. That's 36 inches. And once we select that, we can edit type, duplicate. And this time I'm gonna call this refrigerator, REF, press okay. And then we can make the height one foot two. One foot, two inches. Press okay. You can take that cabinet and just throw it in here. Notice how this thing is not proper sized. We can DI, measure what the actual width is. It is three feet. If our fridge three feet, it's two foot ten and a half. Simply slide this in here. AL to align this with that. AL to align the top of this cabinet with the top of this cabinet. We're gonna push this cabinet over and then we're going to align it as well to here. Then we're going to simply move the fridge. I'm just going to use the align command again. Select the center of this and the center of the fridge. So we have the fridge moved over and then I'm going to go ahead and align my countertop. Notice how I'm quickly able to make the cabinets function. I can shrink this cabinet down to one feet. I can go under edit type and make it a height of one feet. So I have a two inch clearance for my fridge to fit in. And again, that concludes exercise 12-2. Please like, subscribe, and comment below. Follow for more content.